Link here with another tutorial and lately I've been thinking about the simpler and the sampler. Now I can just drag an audio file into an audio channel, cut it up, add effects and do all sorts of things just with the audio file. So why would I want to use a simpler or a sampler? What's the benefit in using a sampler? Well, there's actually some really cool features that the simpler and sampler have that I think a lot of people aren't familiar with. Let's get started. All right, so I don't usually write trap but I've got a bit of a trap beat going here. Let's check it out. Hey, 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 hey. There's just like a chant and a big uh, 808 kick, some, uh, you know, percussion, little snare rolls here. Hey, 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 hey. Pretty basic stuff. And I want to sort of incorporate this trumpet loop I found. I've written the bass line in E. This is a trumpet loop in F, but it's the right tempo. So we'll just transpose it down one semitone and just hear what it sounds like. It sounds all right, but I think we can do a lot of creative stuff with a simpler. So let's drag in a simpler and we'll put our loop into the simpler and we'll set the simpler to slicing mode. And this is really cool. It's actually a fairly new feature to have this slicing mode. But as you can see, it's created a bunch of little markers similar to warp markers automatically and it does a pretty good job at finding the transients but you can change the sensitivity if it does a bad job so right now we've got the sensitivity all the way up and we can just zoom in and start adjusting some of these just so they sit right in front of the transient marker and you just double click if you want to remove a transient marker cool we can now play each individual trumpet note on our keyboard Not bad. Let's delete this channel and see if we can jam something here. Hey. 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 Oh wait, it's in the wrong key. <laughs> so what we need to do is just transpose it down one semitone. And while we're here, you can actually change the warping algorithm. So for this, I think we'll go with Complex Pro. Hey. 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 Let's make this a lot easier for ourselves and use an arpeggiator. So we'll set the rate to, yeah, one eighth is probably good. And let's go with the converge style. And I'm just going to create a new MIDI track and put a MIDI note in for every slice. And we'll just legato those all the way across the clip like this. Not bad, not bad. It might sound a little bit better if we give it a bit of spaciness to it. So let's just um, go with a ping pong, maybe a little reverb and see what this sounds like. And the cool thing about this is you can just automate the transposition on the entire sort of situation. So for this section where the bass drops down to a C, let's pitch these samples up. I started at negative one and I'm going up to plus 11. So that's a full octave higher. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Pretty cool. I think that sounds pretty cool. Another idea I had, if you remember checking out my tutorial where I created a vibrato anything rack, let's actually try that out and we can automate a little bit of vibrato in there. I think that's a neat way to take like a regular trumpet loop and really just modify it and change it into something different. And you can experiment with all different kinds of styles of um, arpeggiation here. And if there's one slice you don't like, you can just remove it from the MIDI clip and it won't play that slice ever. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, just let your imagination run wild, you know, maybe try it with some percussion, maybe try it with some kind of singing vocal loop. There's a lot of possibilities with an arpeggiator and a simpler in slice mode. All right, let's talk about the sampler now. It's way more powerful. You can actually import multiple samples up to 128 samples, I believe, which is crazy. And then you can do some crazy stuff with it. Let me show you. So I've got this pack of Vengeance baseline one shots that I put through mixed in key. And now I have different folders of all the different keys. And we write in this song in E. So let's drag in all of these E sounds. There's a lot here. I don't know how many there is exactly. And then what you can do is just right click and go distribute ranges equally and that will spread every sample across my entire 
keyboard here, excluding <laughs> a bunch of these at the end. So we'll actually just trim off a few of these here. So you can just select these, hit delete, and there we go. So with them all selected, and we've got the ranges distributed equally, I can adjust the root key. And this is really important because if I press any key on the keyboard right now, they're all gonna play the same note, which is E. That might be cool, but I wanna do something a little bit different with this. So let's just drag this all the way down to negative C2, and you can see all the root notes have been set to the very bottom. And then we can drag this back up to E1, which is the root note of our bass line there. Every different sample that we play also has a different note. The keyboard is accurate, so if I press a C, it plays a C, but it plays a different sample. Now, the cool thing about this is in the sampler, there's actually this ZN shift, and that actually shifts the MIDI information only for the zone here. So if I press this C here, and then move the ZN shift, you can hear it's picking different samples. Let's get an LFO, Max for Live. We'll map the LFO to the ZN shift, set the rate up to max. And now anytime we press any note, it'll be that note and it'll be always a different sample. So I'm just pressing E on the keyboard. Now I'll press F. Instead of sitting here and <laughs> furiously hitting the keyboard, we're getting used an arpeggiator again. So if we set the rate to 16th and then hold down a key, we're getting some cra crazy glitching sounds here. And you can actually change the steps, say four, and just hold down one key. You can see it goes from the original note we pressed, then plus 12, then plus 12 again, four times, yeah? So it's like doo -doo 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 -doo. And if you have a push, <laughs> you can literally just mash your hand on this um, whole pad here and it'll just do some crazy stuff and actually on the push you can change the scale of all the pads on here so um, if you're writing your song in E you can change the scale of your pad situation to E and I think a minor pentatonic scale will work really well It's really, really fun. Um, obviously, there's going to be some bung notes in there or some strange sounds that you don't like. So what I'd recommend is just create a new audio channel and send the output into that new audio channel and then hit record. Just delete that channel and now you've got this cool audio file with all these crazy glitchy sounds. You can cut out the ones you don't like. You can rearrange them, do all sorts of crazy things. So let's get a new idea started. I've got uh, some drums over here set to 110. Let's just duplicate this channel down here. I'm gonna take this part, pop it over here. Let's put some side chain on here, set this up, and let's see what that sounds like. So the warping's a little bit messed up, but because we know that we triggered these sounds on 16ths, we can set this to beats, 16ths, looping mode off, and then turn the groove on so that it matches our drums. Pretty cool. Um, but that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you uh, more stuff that you can do with the sampler. There's a whole world inside of the sampler with all these different tabs. You can do so much cool stuff. And to really illustrate that, what I'm going to do is just record a sine wave with uh, analog to use in our sampler. So I'll record an E1, just flatten that. We might turn it up a bit actually. Control J, and then we'll drag it into our, into our sampler. Now this is really cool. We can isolate one cycle of the sine wave and just use a sine wave inside of a sampler. Now this snap mode here is supposed to snap to the zero position on the waveform, but it's not always accurate. Someone in the comments actually told me that it's not always accurate. And I didn't believe him because it looks accurate, right? That should be a nice, smooth sine wave. Let's set the root note to 
E1 because that's what we played on the analog. I don't know, it does sound pretty accurate, doesn't it? I did have some problems when I used snap in my testing and it didn't work, but apparently it does. So just be careful. You can always turn snap off and then really zoom way in and try and get the right. Uh, you can actually, you know, zoom in and really find that zero point. But anyway, moving on. The coolest thing about the sampler is the oscillator. You can actually introduce FM synthesis. So if we turn the volume up on the FM here, Pretty cool. Let's set the course to three. <laughs> this is really, really fun. And then if we want to use this envelope here. Suddenly we've got like a Jaws kind of bass line. Or you can do a donk. Another one of the tricks that a lot of people like to show off is the pitch envelope um, to add more punch to the start of your sound. Have a, a very quick pitch bend going from a very high pitch down to your normal pitch and you just tune in your decay. And you can just dial back the amount. Sounds pretty tough. And then over on the filter tab, we turn the filter off, um, but there's a little shaper guy down here, and this is really neat. You can get some really interesting results out of this. You can even send the shaped signal into a filter, or you can send the filtered signal into the shaper, which makes for uh, some pretty cool like neuro sounding stuff. And then over here, man, it just gets deeper and deeper. You've got three LFOs and an auxiliary envelope to do even more cool stuff. So for example, let's turn this filter off for right now and let's have the auxiliary envelope adjust the distortion amount. So if we turn this all the way up, you can see that the shape amount turns down after the envelope. And if you want some wideness, you can just turn the spread up a little bit. And that makes for a pretty nice kind of glitch up bass line. Let's, I don't know, let's jam out something here. That sounds really cool, I think. You layer a sub under that and it's the beginning of a track. All right, this is where things get really fun with the sampler. I've just duplicated the same patch that we used to write this uh, little bass line here. And let's start really messing with it. <laughs> All of these envelopes, including the FM envelope, has a loop function. So we can turn this on to sync or just loop. And over here on the auxiliary, we can do the same thing. We'll try and make it like a little bit of a different loop timing. And let's turn on this LFO and we'll, uh, apparently filter is grayed out. I wonder why that is. We don't have it on. <laughs> All right, let's turn it on. We've got it set to morphing mode. So this LFO here will adjust the frequency of the filter. So it'll be going like this. It's already sounding pretty neuro -y. And then we can enable LFO 2 and set this to our filter morph. So now this LFO is adjusting this. So it'll be whipping back and forth like this, like crazy. It's gonna sound cool. Probably a bit fast. And then you can introduce a small amount of spin, which actually includes some stereo sort of effect. <laughs> Let's go even crazier. Let's make LFO3 adjust the speed of LFO2. We'll set the glide on and set it to like 500 or something. And now we can just play any key on the keyboard. So cool, we just made a crazy neuro patch in a simpler using just a sine wave.
So I recorded a bunch of crazy neuro sounds and just put an OTT on the channel with a little bit of sidechain and I cut out some of my favorite bits and just placed them in our little mini track here. Let's check it out. I think it sounds pretty cool. So yeah, there's um, a lot of really cool things you can do with a simpler. And we're only using a sine wave. Imagine what else you can do if you had a more complicated sample. But you know, for the purpose of this tutorial, I just wanted to show how powerful the sampler really is on its own. So cool, hopefully this video can illustrate the power of the sampler. It's not just for changing the pitch of one sound over your keyboard, you know. You can do some really, really crazy stuff with the sampler. Definitely play around with all the settings and try all kinds of different samples inside your sampler. The FM synthesis mode makes for such a crazy situation, man. You can FM anything, any different sound. So it's really, really cool. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Peace. Go.